name's Russ. Uh, we're here in Smelt Bay on Cortez Island in the Salish Sea. I've got a 45-year-old steel cutter out there that's uh, spent most of its career crossing the Atlantic, but now it's on the BC coast. Uh, it's where I live for the summer. So let's go aboard and check it out. Up here, we have the V-berth of the bow of the boat. I guess there's food in there, some tools, and extra storage with like a wetsuit and some backpacks. And then I've just got clothes hanging right now because it's uh, it's getting into September and things are starting to get damp. This is a fireplace I built, a wood stove. It has an air intake from outside with the um, valve so that can regulate the heat, but it's not a big enough valve. I'd recommend making it bigger for anybody else. And then exhaust is pretty awesome, stainless steel. Uh, composting toilet here with an air vent hooked up to a fan so it's always just bringing air through which helps dry it out and uh, keep any scent out of the boat it works really well and then this is just different food storage because when it goes sailing you know things kind of get rocky so I wanted wanted to have a little bit of uh, ability to store food in glass jars which is nice and uh, and keep things safe because we don't really want glass smashing around the boat Hammocks are common on boats and they help both keep things dry and safe space. Some different vegetables from the garden. And these are two benches. There's a, a s about 70 liters of water storage in here, which I use a foot pump. And then I have water storage in jugs as well, just to maximize what's, uh, what's on board. And it's easy to, to move jugs if I'm not taking the boat to somewhere that there's a hose to, water, to fill it up, like at a dock then they just use water jugs, um, usually bags, put them in a big backpack and haul 25 liters at a time or something. Um, these are my beds, so I just fold it up every time I use it more or less, and, and underneath is lo lots, of, lots of foam, and then I put cotton down underneath to help keep things dry, and, um, and at the same time it's easy to air out the cotton. I guess there's always a couple boats now have to have three main fire escapes. So there's one here and another one up here. And they're also great ventilation for, um, for getting air to flow through the boat. So now we're looking at the stern of the boat. And that's towards the back. We've got a, a marine stove here. These are really nice. It's not appropriate to have propane inside the boat, but that's what I've got right now. I turn it off and on every time I use it. We've got fire extinguishers all over it. We've got a sink, so it's just plumb to go outside. It goes right into water. And then foot pumps down here for fresh and salt water. And so that's doing dishes. It's a lot easier to clean with fresh water. Salt water just doesn't seem to clean as much. There's no fridge. So the temperature on board down below is generally water temperature. So I'm going with fresh foods and dried foods. And then in the back, which we can't really see, there's a bunch of sail storage. A lot of space was opened up. I took the cockpit out of the boat, which is uncommon for a sailboat to have a flush deck. So I did that and then there's a lot more space, but it's also to access what's going on in there. I said it's a 45 year old steel boat and it was built out of thin steel from the start. And, uh, and there's a lot of rust back there. It's a, it's a serious, um, area for attention, so at least I know I uncovered parts of the boat that hadn't been seen for for 45 years Then there's a what's called a day tank for diesel diesel engine it's a Really nice little diesel engine So It sits here down below in the keel. There's a, a larger reservoir and so that gets pumped up by hand when, uh, when we need fuel up here, which would be every 30 hours of running the boat or something like that. And the cool thing about like this particular motor is I've invested extra money to have um, bio oils in it and biofuels so that it can, you know, just, just to acknowledge that that's accessible and yeah, it's worth the investment. Cool. So these are the solar panels. Uh, these are flexible panels. Advantages are they can curve to surfaces, which is really nice and um, they also supposedly do a bit better in low light conditions and cloudy conditions, which is great for our coast. So these are 50 watts each. They put out often 14 and a half volts, readily every day, 13 and a half. So this is my main boom here, main sail. It takes a little bit to put up, especially by oneself compared to a head sail of a, like a roller furling. This is the self steering. It gets a wind vane that goes on here, the vane, and then the tab goes down in the water and and with be balancing the sails, it essentially allows one to do, once the sails are set, and, and this is well aligned, 
not touch anything and the boat will sail itself on a straight course. Um, as you can tell, there's not really any railings or stanchions on this boat, which means I tie myself in when I go sailing like that. And there's no cockpit, no winches, and they run two head sails sometimes going into the wind. So there's two head sails to adjust and then the main sail on this boat points really well. So it's worth having, having both sails up. And then this area is something that, that I've kind of built. So I took out the cockpit and the winches and everything and put a flush deck on it so I could have some deck space because there wasn't really anywhere to, to chill on this boat. And then I put the pilot house on top as well. So, so that there was just more interior space and the deck space is wonderful. I'd nap here a lot, stretch here, do yoga, hang out and, uh, and really appreciate just having the open space. It can go at five knots under motor, but I usually run it closer to four, four and a half because, um, because it's quieter and just easier. It was originally built out of thin steel, which is 0.108 mils is the term. So less than an eighth of an inch thick, which is thin for most boats. And, um, and it's 45 years old. One could say that it's not in great condition, although the fact that it's made of 45 years is a testament as well. And I got the boat in a, in a boat yard that was, someone had pulled it out and taken it apart. They'd been living in it for seven years on the water and it became too much or it, they did, it was no longer in their alignment to, to continue on with it. So they sold it and I found it online. Um, it was $3,500 and and it needed it needed work to get floating again. Getting an old boat that that needs a lot of work, and learning it's also brought up a certain sense of confidence and knowing like, hey, like yeah, the boat might you know be on the edge, but at the same time, any boat always is. Even even an amazingly thick, brand new steel boat is going to be vulnerable in its own way. And um, knowing that. You know, it is true that our lives can end at any time and our homes can be taken from us at any time, but but to be on a boat really uh, accentuates that. The challenges of living on a boat, cleanliness stands out as number one. Um, this particular boat doesn't have any way of getting fresh water on board other than hauling it or using a hose. There's no shower. Condensation's a reality on most boats, so so doing the best to keep things dry on the inside and, and that goes along with health and cleanliness. The reason that I became interested in sailing was because it offers a method of transport that is in harmony with nature. And there's often new people around and new friends, whether it, whether it be humans or, or birds or fish or whales that are close by to look at and to see. And um, it's very dynamic. This boat can hear everything because it's just it's just fairly bare steel and hear someone dragging a boat down the beach like oh what's that noise and see a, a buddy down the beach pulling a skiff and and this is for morning and then out behind it are whales breaching that he's completely oblivious to so people from all over in all different lifestyles have boats and live on boats and part of the living on on the water thing is knowing that we we're such a tight community on the water for people we don't know and we look out for each other. And I went to U University of Alberta and then UBC and got an undergraduate in metallurgical engineering and a master's in clean energy engineering. And 2010 is when I graduated with the master's. It took a long time to gain financial stability here on the island. It's partly because it's remote, because I'm new, you know, getting into the community in a really solid way. Myself, I have a garden as well and, um, and feel a certain amount of of groundedness here so it's making it bringing it together in this location and and part of the the vision of the sailing and the sailboat is to be able to import chocolate and I, I make chocolate and to be able to sail and make that connection for the community and for for everybody and but it's also really really fun and uh, and kind of a constant adventure so it's magical some people think it's romantic when you get down to it the romance is imaginary stuff and that fades away to the reality of what it is it's in alignment with where i'm at in life right now being on a boat is cool because you know that it can sail anywhere the oceans are in the world essentially and my home that my shelter you know is is capable of being a vehicle and traveling too so Thanks for coming aboard Cavale 3 and uh, maybe I'll see you on the water or on Cortez someday.
Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode in the Alternative Dwelling series. If you wanted to see more, a playlist is popping up right now where you can watch every episode we've ever made. Uh, don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button and check out the links in the description if you want to support this channel and this show. And we'll see you next Monday for another episode of Alternative Dwellings.